Hello, this is book two for July 2020, and uh, <coughs> we're um, working our way through. We're going to continue talking about some of the famous Masons that you may or may not have known were Masons at all. The actors have included many native-born Americans and immigrants from Europe both in the early silent films and in later talking pictures. Harold Lloyd, W.C. Fields, Douglas Fairbanks Sr., uh, Al Jolson, Clark Gable, Tom Mix, Oliver Hardy of Laurel and Hardy Films, uh, Ernest Borgnine and Eddie Cantor, Elmo Lincoln, the first actor to play Tarzan of the Apes in a film, Audie Murphy, who played the frightened soldier in The Red Badge of Courage, and in real life was the most decorated hero of the Second World War. The comedians and television stars are Arthur Godfrey and Red Skelton, Roy Rogers and John Wayne. Many composers of popular music have been Freemasons. The composer of famous military marches, John Philip Sousa, Irving Berlin, who in a long career composed Alexander's Ragtime Band, the music for Top Hat and other Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers films, and many other well-known pieces. George M. Cohen, and, who composed Yankee Doodle Dandy and the patriotic song Over There, The Yanks Are Coming, which aroused support for the intervention of the United States in the First World War. And the African-American jazz composers, musicians, and band leaders, Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, Nat King Cole, Paul Whiteman, and William Count Basie. So I'm guessing they were Prince Hall Masons. In sport, there are the boxer Joe, Jack Dempsey and African-American boxers Jack Johnson. Oh, I didn't know Jack Johnson. Um, and I read this book. I have forgotten that. And Sugar Ray Robinson. And the baseball players Ty Cobb, Roger Hornsby, and Branch Rickey. The smallest and tallest man, men on record were Freemasons. In the 19th century, the midget Charles S. Stratton, who was exhibited by the circus manager P.T. Barnum as General Tom Thumb, was two feet in height. Robert Pershing Watlow, who was nearly nine feet tall, died at the age of 22 in 1940. In circus entertainment, the six Ringling brothers, who developed the performance that became known as the greatest show on earth, were Masons. Some of the traditional heroes of the American West in the 19th century were Freemasons. Kit Carson and William F. Cody, Buffalo Bill, who became a member of the legislature in Nebraska. So, so was the famous 19th century journalist uh, Richard A. Locke and in the 20th century Norman Vincent Peale. The famous Protestant clergyman, preacher, and best-selling author. The former Houdini, the performer Houdini, with his vanishing con conjuring trick, and the cartoonist George McManus. The Freemasons can claim to have had several distinguished judges among their brothers. The most eminent is undoubtedly John Marshall, who was Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court for 34 years from 1801 to 1835. When he died at the age of 77, he died more than anyone to mold. He did, I'm sorry, he did more than anyone to mold the Constitution of the United States and to establish the role of the Supreme Court as the upholder of the constitutional rights of American citizens. More recently, Earl Warren was Chief Justice from 1953 to 1969, playing the leading part in a series of judicial decisions that established the rights of the African Americans and other minority groups. Whatever may be said about the fall in Masonic influence in the last 70 years, the Freemasons in the United States are still more numerous, wealthier, and more secure than in any other country. In 1998, there were 12,841 mainstream lodges with 2,066,216 Freemasons. And in addition, 4,243 Prince Hall Lodges with 200,817 members. 
This is still nearly half of all the Freemasons in the world. The Freemasons, so many of whom are successful businessmen, are wealthy. This is shown by the splendid halls where their lodges meet. In England, Freemasons Hall in London, the headquarters of the English Grand Lodge, is a magnificent building, though there is no other Masonic building in England of comparable grandeur. The ordinary Freemason lodges lodge meets in some cases in small, old, dilapidated buildings, where they first convented, convented in the 17th and 18th centuries. In other cases, they meet in expensive hotels and restaurants, which the Freemasons regularly patronize, and occasionally in medium-sized modern buildings belonging to the lodge. Many lodges in the United States are almost as impressive as Freemason halls in London. And I've seen some of the black free Freemasons or some of the black Masons. Just like the black community, they're not doing too well. You know, and again, if you're dealing with black men and most of the black men are always under attack, then we're going to reflect that in the Mason Lodge. And um, some of the decent black Masons that I know of, I know of a couple, they're really decent people. But what it is I find is this black men who didn't, well, the two that I know didn't really go to the university and they want that stature. Um... And so I know of some black men who just won't join the Masons because they're Christians and they think it conflicts. But regardless of what you think or, or not think, I mean, I want you, don't want you to think that there are some opulent Masons living the life like the book says. Maybe the white ones are, but the black ones are not. So with that said, I want to, or at least most of the black ones are not, or a majority of the black ones are not. I want to say thank you. I appreciate your help, your support, and I want you to take care of your mind, your body, and please be safe. Please, please, please be safe.